Hi, so in this video, we're going to start a conversation related to the components of COSO internal control framework. This framework was developed uh, in 1992, I believe, by the COSO organization. And that was made up of five normal accounting organizations, the Institute of Management Accountants, Financial Executives Institute, AAA, which is American Accounting Association, not the auto one, AICPA, American Institute of CPAs, and the CIA, which is not the Central Intelligence Agency, but the Certified Internal Auditors. So they developed an internal control framework because it was in the early 90s, there was another rash of frauds and uh, wanted to develop a good framework in order to help companies combat those. So the first and really kind of the base of their framework is the control environment. And this is what we talk about if you hear the tone at the top. Are your, is your management speaking of doing business right or is it a win at all cost and or somewhere in between? Um, if you ever have a chance, watch the movie uh, Smartest Guys in the Room. It is on the Enron fraud. You see such a toxic control environment. It was definitely a win at all cost. They were encouraged to make money no matter how it was. The only thing that mattered was the stock price. And that really is what led to a lot of the downfall. So this also, this culture affects behavior of companies, employees. First of all, in that case, they are more apt to commit fraud, but it also affects their willingness to participate in internal control as recommended. You know, um, it starts with the code of conduct. Of course, Enron had a code of conduct, but it, what management was saying was so much different than what was in that code of conduct. Top management supports having an internal control environment. You know, if they're saying, yes, do this, this is important. We need to safeguard our assets. That's going to be the case versus, oh, this doesn't matter. This is just to check the box for the accountants is going to be a large difference of how individuals react. And remember in our last lecture, we talked about how internal control starts with the bottom up. Everybody participates in one way or another for internal control. Sometimes you may not realize that you're part of it, but it is. So if you have this bad control environment or internal environment, as I said, it encourages other employees to commit fraud, as well as that's when you have control breakdowns. So there's a lot of other factors that go with the whole tone at the top. First of all, uh, just the overall management philosophy and how they operate. Are they open? Um, if you deliver bad news, is there punishment? And the last one is the risk appetite. So how much risk is your management willing to take on? Now, some companies are very conservative by nature and some take on more risk but still trying to balance that out is necessary. And so that risk appetite is how much your management of risk they're willing to take over. Now, just being in business has risk, but things that add risk are adding new products, you know, doing some other risk, you know, sourcing from a scarce, but scarce source. There's a lot of other things that, that play into that. So just having that overall philosophy affects a lot of things downstream as far as internal control. Sometimes a high risk or um, a high risk appetite also sometimes leads to management overlooking controls because it's a move at faster pace. And sometimes some of that attention to detail may suffer, not always. Um, attention and direction of the board of directors. So do you have an active board of directors? Are they independent? Um, are members of the audit committee also understanding of financials? Um, now, after SOX, the individuals on the audit committee do have to have a financial background, where before that was not the case. Also, prior um, to SOX, the board of directors was not always independent. Um, I know when I started at Deere in the early 90s, 
there were half of the board of directors were actually dear employees and you don't see that now now there's still a lot of i'll be on your board if you're a mine type of attitude so there's still some questions of independence but not like there was before is your management talking about ethical values uh and you know they're competent in making sure that they're hiring competent people are they in turn showing integrity in their actions you know if you know that your manager is you know in one way or another stealing it makes you a little more apt to follow suit uh not correct the other thing to think about is organizational structure and, and i'm not talking about having a formal uh, hierarchy of who reports to whom um but do you know who to go to if there's issues uh are you having some oversight uh you know some supervision clear understanding of exactly what you're supposed to do and your responsibilities so just that overall structure of supervision we heard that in the walter pavlo video i don't have a boss that i could talk to therefore well it is somewhat true you know at his level that was a little bit more of a an excuse but especially for newer employees having somebody to go to when there are issues who do you discuss this with and the last thing to really consider from a human resource perspective is who are you hiring are you hiring individuals that fit the culture are you hiring individuals that seem to want to do business right rather than you know all they're looking for is do whatever i can to get my promotion in the next three months if possible um background checks these are valid tools to use in part of the hr process so you can do a thorough background check especially if it is someone who is going to be handing high value assets cash for example uh, or readily convertible assets cash for example um you may not want to have somebody who's been to prison for fraud be your treasurer which is overseeing a lot of the cash operations and cash flow in the company so therefore you know that doesn't mean you don't hire people and give them second chances you just don't put them in you know in a high risk area at first all right so in your textbook there is problem one and i just noted this here so you're pretending you are an audit supervisor and you're going to go to gogo corporation funny name uh, which is publicly traded and so you did kind of a pre-visit to review overall policies so the question is asking is this scenario whichever one there's uh a through f here um a violation of the control environment is there a control environment weakness so focus strictly on the control environment here um and if so what sh what is the problem and what should be done so i would pause this video and work through a through e and uh on your own and then bring the video back up and i'll go through the answers